Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. And today, I want to talk for a little bit about Jalen Brunson. A couple nights ago, I got the chance to see my favorite team, the Thunder, face off against the Knicks at Madison Square Garden. It was electric. The Garden is always a really fun atmosphere to be in. And as a Thunder fan, it was everything I could have asked for. OKC won on a Shea game winner at that. It was amazing back and forth the entire night. And Jada went out there and had a 35-point game, nearly getting his career high. It was incredible. Plus, the Thunder also clinched a playoff berth officially for the first time since the rebuild began. But the Thunder weren't the only reason it was so exciting, because on the other side, I was really excited to get the chance to watch Jalen Brunson live for the second time. I watched him once last year when the Thunder played the Knicks as well at Madison Square Garden, but in that game, OKC kind of took a big lead, ended up having a bit of a blowout win, so Jalen Brunson didn't play that much, but in this game, he was in full force doing the ridiculous, impossible stuff that he's been doing this entire season that I still feel like is kind of flying under the radar. In this game, Brunson had 30 points, two boards, seven dimes, and a steal, knocking down four threes, and just ridiculous clutch buckets all over the place. Brunson was electric. It didn't matter if it was Lou Dort on him, Cason Wallace, if he was attacking Chet Holmgren down low. The Thunder have so many great defenders, but for Brunson, it just really never mattered. He's so good at keeping guys on their toes, using his elite footwork, some of the best footwork I've ever seen from a guard. I mean, you see him post up out there as like a 6-2 player. There was one possession where he posted up Aaron Wiggins and got a bucket on him, and Wiggins is so much taller, it just doesn't matter because the footwork is so elite. He's so good at using his body to back guys down. He's incredible attacking downhill, knocking down those three-point shots, which has really come along since his days as a Maverick. And you don't truly appreciate the stuff that you're seeing with Jalen Brunson until you watch him live. Because, you know, I've been watching him all year on League Pass and nationally televised games, but actually seeing him in person, it shouldn't be possible. The stuff that he does as the guy who's just 6'2 out there, just taking on so many bigger, stronger defenders and making it look easy in the process, hitting some of the most insane buckets you'll ever see from a guy his size. He's got one of the most complete offensive skill sets out of anybody in the entire league right now, and this has led to some ridiculous numbers. He's putting up 27.9 points per game, 3.6 rebounds, and 6.5 assists, while shooting 48% from the field, 40% from deep, and 84% from the line. He's got a career high in points, assists, and steals, and in fact, his scoring total of, again, 27.9 points per game is the fourth highest in the entire NBA this season. The only players he's averaging less than are Luka Doncic, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Shea Gilgis-Alexander, all of whom are top four in the MVP race. He's ahead of guys like Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Jason Tatum, Steph Curry, De'Aaron Fox, Nicole Jokic, Anthony Edwards, LeBron, Tyrese Maxey, Kyrie Irving, Damian Lillard, Tyrese Halliburton, all these fantastic offensive players. The league has never been more gifted offensively, and Brunson's up there in the upper echelon as a top four scorer in the league this season. It's an insane stat that I feel like not many people realize, or at least are not giving enough attention to. He has had to carry the Knicks on his back this entire season because while on paper they look stacked, they have a ton of depth, great star power, they very rarely, if ever, had guys consistently on the court. Julius Randle started the year terrible, kind of found his footing, and then dealt with a shoulder injury. We don't know when he's coming back from that still. OG Ananobi has had an elbow injury after starting off great in his Knicks debut his first few weeks there, hasn't played in a little while, showed up for a little bit, had to go out again. We don't know when OG is going to be back full time. Mitchell Robinson has been out forever. Recently, he came back, but is still kind of dealing with that injury management, so isn't playing his typical role. Role players have been in and out of the lineup. Even Brunson himself has dealt with some injuries, but when he's been on the court, he's been consistently their best player, one of the best players in the entire world. In the month of March, the Knicks had a pretty tough schedule, and they still managed to put on a 9-5 record, with Brunson putting up 29-3-6 on 48-38-81 splits this month, and that led him to winning Player of the Month. Right before I record this video, he officially received the honor for the month of March, and it is very, very deserved, because very few players, if any, are doing the things that he's doing on a nightly basis right now. Not to mention, just a few days before that Thunder game, Brunson had 61 points against the Spurs on the road, the best game of his career, four rebounds, six assists, a steal, shooting 53% from the floor, was one point short of tying Carmelo Anthony for the most points in a game in Knicks history. 
He was otherworldly. The Knicks, as usual, were completely decimated in this game, missing a lot of talent like they have been for a while now. And the Spurs were unbelievable. They could not miss from three, despite being a pretty bad three-point shooting team on the year. Shot 50% in the first half. And the Knicks went down by as much as 21 points in this game going into the third quarter. Like, the Knicks probably could have just fallen out of this game entirely if it weren't for Jalen Brunson keeping them in it single-handedly. In the third quarter alone, Brunson had 24 points on 10 of 13 shooting and outscored the Spurs by himself. He could not miss, shot 4-4 from deep in that quarter, had some big buckets down the stretch of the game to get it to overtime, and eventually they would end up falling because Victor Wembanyama also was absurd with a 40-20 game on ridiculous efficiency. But the Knicks, with the way Wemby was playing in the Spurs shooting, shouldn't have even been able to get that game to overtime, never mind have a chance to win it close to the buzzer. The only reason they could is because of Brunson. This is a great example of how he's continuously put this team on his back, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of how much an opposing star is going off. He's fearless in these moments, and he's always going to give the Knicks at least a chance to win, no matter who's supporting him out there. He's got 29 games of 30 plus points this season, which is fourth in the NBA, which really speaks to his overall consistency, and the advanced metrics love him too. EPM, which is an overall impact metric, which a lot of people have said is their favorite at this point, has him as the ninth best player in the league this season. Estimated wins, which is pretty self-explanatory, just estimates the amount of wins you bring to your team per year. Brunson is top five, only behind Shea, Luka, Jokic, and Giannis, all of whom are in the depths of the MVP conversation, probably going to finish top four. And I feel like not enough people are talking about this. I'm not seeing enough discussion about how Brunson has been one of the best players in the world this season. Like, I'll see people having conversations about who should be an all-NBA first team, and it does feel like there are four locks. Shea, Giannis, Jokic, and Luka. Those guys should be an all-NBA first team. They're going to be the top four in the MVP race. Makes sense. But then there's a discussion about who should be the fifth guy. Should it be Jason Tatum, the best player on the Celtics, the best team in the league? Should it be like a Kevin Durant, a Kawhi Leonard? I feel like Jalen Brunson belongs in those conversations too. Even if you don't think he should end up making the team, I get that because there are a lot of great talents, but his name should be brought up. At the very least, he will be a lock to make All-NBA second team and just deserves more love for the things that he's been doing, especially when you think about where the narrative started with him when he signed with the Knicks in the first place. I remember people freaking out when Brunson signed that four-year, $104 million contract to join the Knicks in the 22 offseason. A lot of Knicks fans were upset feeling like it was a lot of money to give a guy that had never been an all-star. A lot of just overall NBA fans like myself felt like it was a bit of an overpay. It just was surprising. And now you fast forward to now where the Knicks are one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference and Brunson is their best player. The contract now seems like a massive underpay. Like he's only making $26 million this year. And you think about some of the best players in the world who are making 40, 50, even up to $60 million a year. Brunson is on one of the best value contracts in the entire NBA. Now the Knicks are going to have to pay him pretty soon here. Next year is the last year of his contract before a player option, which of course he's going to decline. So eventually he will be making that type of superstar money, but he's earned that. And the fact that they have him on this cheap contract in the first place is a massive testament to where he was at one point and how far he's pushed himself just a couple years later. I was extremely wrong about Brunson and I'm happy to admit it. It's been really cool to watch him go from this second option over Dallas to now being the most nights number one guy over here in New York, carrying them throughout this injured period, helping them maintain one of the top spots in the Eastern Conference, becoming an all-star, an all-NBA player, even being pushed into MVP conversations by some people. There have even been debates throughout the season about whether or not Jalen Brunson can be the number one guy on a championship team. And people even debating that would have seemed insane just a few years ago. It's ridiculous how far he's come, how great he is. If you haven't seen him play live, if you get the chance, do so because he is extremely special to watch and you won't truly appreciate how great he is until you see him in person. And again, I just don't think there's been enough coverage for the way that he's elevated himself as well as the Knicks in spite of these injuries, how insane he's been. So one of the reasons I want to go ahead and make this video, just combined with the fact that he has been so ridiculous. And yeah, I think that's all we got to say about Brunson and the Knicks at this point. Fingers crossed that they get healthy. I really want to see this Knicks team fully healthy and ready to go going into the playoffs because on paper, they look like one of the better teams in the East. I think they could make an Eastern Conference Finals run or maybe even an NBA Finals run if they really put it all together and everybody is back on the court 100%. They've got a special squad over there. And of course, Jalen Brunson is the head of that snake. And even if they are injured in any series where they have Jalen Brunson, I think they've got a chance just because that's how good he is. Good 
going to be the best player in most series that they play. He's absurd. So I appreciate y'all watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Drop down below in the comments. Where do you have Jalen Brunson in your all NBA teams, maybe even in your MVP race? And how far do you think the Knicks can go if they get healthy or even if they're injured? Do you still think they could pull off an upset if Brunson is here just playing the way that he's been playing? I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one, say it back.